Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making the start, at the very least, on my review of Rosemary's Baby by Ira Levin. This is an introdu has an introduction with Chuck Palahniuk as well. It's kind of almost like a haunted house story, except it's haunted by people rather than ghosts. Um, and it's also interesting because it's in the middle of New York City. Um, Chuck actually talks about that in his intro, um, which I want to... Actually, I don't think I'm going to read that too much. Yeah, basically in the introduction, Paul and Nick was saying about how in the past, haunted or creepy and horror novels had always taken place like over there, like in Dracula's Castle or wherever, or Scot you know, Scotland, I think that was where Frankenstein was, wasn't it? It was on the moors of some place anyway. Um, and so people in cities, you know, they felt safe from it. And then along comes Rosemary's Baby, which is set in the middle of New York City and kind of changed the game a little bit. So as always, I'm gonna read you the blurb, then I'm gonna go through it and check out some of my tabs, and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end, so. Dane reads. Rosemary Woodhouse and her struggling actor husband Guy move into the Bramford, an old New York City apartment building with an ominous reputation and only elderly residents. Neighbors Roman and Minnie Castaway come, I'm gonna say, I'm not sure how to, Neighbours Roman and Minnie Castaway soon come nosing around to welcome them and, despite Rosemary's reservations about their eccentricity and the weird noises she keeps hearing, her husband starts spending time with them. Shortly after Guy lands a plum Broadway role, Rosemary becomes pregnant and the Castaways start taking a special interest in her welfare. As the sickened Rosemary becomes increasingly isolated, she begins to, ex she begins to suspect that the Castaways' circle is not what it seems. Um, it might be Castavet. I mean, they said it's said in the novel that they come from America. I can't remember where exactly. I want to say Omaha was one of them. Um, but it's also hinted that the surname itself might be of French origin. And if the surname is of French origin, then it's Castavet. If it's the American way, it's just Castavet. Um, but we're going to go with Castavet because I've been reading a lot of French stuff. So that's just how I read it in my head, I suppose. So um, I'm going to start with the introduction by Chuck Paul and Nick. There's just one main bit that I wanted to read out here. And this again goes back to what I was just saying. Uh, yes, everyday life was all well and fine until Ira Levin brought the requisite haunted castle into the Upper West Side of Manhattan. Such a stroke of genius to haul all of the creaking, clanking monster movie cliches into the midst of sophisticated, smart alecky New Yorkers. Monsters in the glaring light of day look hilarious. Minnie Castaway, for example. But they remain monsters. And reading the first two thirds of this book, Rosemary's Baby, you don't know whether to laugh or to worry. To admit fear would be to lose face and risk being branded as a superstitious rube. Rosemary Woodhouse is from Omaha, Nebraska. Most of the people who read this book will be from places like Omaha or Great Falls or Tacoma or Shreveport. And none of them want to look like idiots, especially not in front of blase city slickers. So no matter how dire and obvious the danger becomes, no one will acknowledge the true malevolence until it's too late. Um, I'm not from anywhere near any of those places you mentioned, but I am from Tamworth, which is a smallish town in the UK. I'm, I'm not like a Londoner, you know? So I guess I'm from the UK equivalent of... We get a reference to um, some murders that happened in this house in London, and it says, The murderers weren't related, nor were the victims, nor were all, nor were all the murders committed for the same moonstone or Maltese falcon. Just some nice references there to uh, classic detective novels. And I like this idea as well. Um, so Rosemary worked her spoon in melon. Maybe there are good houses too, she said. Houses where people keep falling in love and getting married and having babies. And becoming stars, Guy said. Probably there are, Hutch said. Only one never hears of them. It's the stinkers that get the publicity. And this just kind of shows, I guess partly the time in which it's set, but also just this kind of religious hatred that re different religions have to each other, which I've never understood because I'm not religious. She wrote to her brother Brian to share her happiness. No one else in the family would have welcomed it. They were all hostile now, parents, brothers, sisters, not forgiving her for A, marrying a Protestant, B, marrying in only a civil ceremony, and C, having a mother-in-law who had two divorces and was married now to a Jew up in Canada. Um, and Mrs. Castaway is asking Rosemary if an electric toothbrush is really better than the old kind. They are, I've been told by my dentist, I have to use an electric toothbrush because my teeth are knackered. Rosemary leans forward feelingly, which just annoys me. An unnecessary adverb. And um, Guy makes Rosemary chocolate mousse. And she says, that's wonderful. It's what I was going to make. See, Guy said, sitting. ESP. My mum does that all the time. Whenever we say something at the same moment or whatever, she's like, ESP. 
You were out in the garden today, so was I. ESP. It's like, no, it's a coincidence. Synchronicity at the very best. Um, oh yeah, and then Rosemary like passes out and Guy has sex with her and that's when she gets pregnant. And he, saw, he, he nods and grins. It was kind of fun, he said, in a necrophile sort of way. And she's like, I dreamed someone was raping me. And someone was raping her. She didn't give consent. You can't give consent when you're passed out. And um, she's thinking about it and she goes, had last night really been, as Guy had put it, baby night? Was she now at this moment actually pregnant? Oddly enough, she didn't care. She was unhappy, whether or not it was silly to be so. Guy had taken her without her knowledge, had made love to her as a mindless body, kind of fun in a necrophile sort of way, rather than as the complete mind and body person she was, and had done so moreover with a savage gusto that had produced scratches, aching soreness, and a nightmare so real and intense that she could almost see on her stomach the designs Roman had drawn with his red-dipped wand. True, he had done it for the best motive in the world to make a baby, and true too he had drunk as much as she had, but she wished that no motive and no number of drinks could have enabled him to take her that way, taking only her body without her soul or self or sheeness, whatever it was he presumably loved. Yet, you got raped, you got raped by your husband, Rosemary. I'm sorry. You might want to leave him. And she goes to meet Hutch, and he's sitting barefoot between two bridge tables, each with its typewriter and piles of paper. His practice was to write two books at once, turning to the second when he struck a snag on the first, and back to the first when he struck a snag on the second. Interesting idea. It's kind of what I do. If I get stuck in a book, I just go away and write in my journal or write a book review or something and then, and then go back. And we get a reference to Rosemary. She's reading Flight of the Falcon by Daphne du Maurier. Um, and also, and as uh, Chuck Paulinick pointed out in his introduction, it's kind of the opposite to what normally happens because normally in these like horror novels you get somebody they go to some unfamiliar place and that's where the horror happens and in this when she goes away to this unfamiliar place in the middle of nowhere that's the only time she's really at peace and safe and we get this on the fourth day she awoke missing him and cried what was she doing there alone in that cold crummy cabin what had he done that was so terrible he had gotten drunk and had grabbed her without saying may i well that was really an earth shaking offense now wasn't it there he was facing the biggest challenge of his career and she, instead of being there to help him, to cue and encourage him, was off in the middle of nowhere, eating herself sick and feeling sorry for herself. Now he raped you. Um, I guess this kind of shows though the way that victims can, you know, blame themselves for things. And her doctor, Dr. Sapperstein, he says, please don't read books. Every pregnancy is different and a book that tells you what you're going to feel in the third week of the third month is only going to make you worry. No pregnancy was ever exactly like the ones described in the books. And don't listen to your friends either. They'll have had experiences very different from yours and they'll be absolutely certain that their pregnancies were the normal ones and that yours is abnormal. Um, and this kind of is just... There's this growing sort of campaign, I guess, to pretty much to isolate her. Um, and that's just one example of when this happened. And uh, she meets some of her friends and Rosemary says, Well, everyone is different. Every pregnancy is different. Not that different, Joan said. You look like Miss Concentration Camp of 1966. That is quite the line. And she ends up sobbing in this food that she serves. <laughs> um, and Tiger says uh, to Rosemary, it's the tears that give the salad an extra zing. Mmm, delicious. And I like this little exchange here as well. Um, Rosemary smiled and watched the snow. This is why I wanted this apartment, she said, to sit here and watch the snow with the fire going. He looked at her and said, I'll bet you still read Dickens. Of course I do, she said. Nobody stops reading Dickens. Yeah, that's very true. And basically Rosemary gets left a copy of this book by one of her friends who dies. Um, and her husband Guy throws it away and he goes, I'm sorry honey, but I just didn't want you reading any more of that stuff and upsetting yourself. She was surprised and annoyed. Guy, she said, Hutch gave me that book. He left it to me. I didn't think about that part of it, Guy said. I just didn't want you upsetting yourself. I'm sorry. That's a terrible thing to do. I'm sorry, I wasn't thinking about Hutch. Even if he hadn't given it to me, you don't throw away another person's books. If I want to read something, I want to read it. Yeah, he's, he's a sucky... Uh, we get a reference to a play called The Fantastics. Uh, it's, going to go on on, it's going to go on and on forever, like that Agatha Christie play in London. Uh, the Mousetrap, I've seen that. I think it's still been going for 60, 70 years or something now. I mean, it hasn't stopped being performed in London since this book was written in the 60s so and even then they were making a note of how long it had been going rosemary goes to see the doctor and the woman who kind of lets her in um she says oh when are you due tuesday rosemary said good luck the woman said you're smart to get it over with before july and august as though that's some kind of choice you know and her baby is born just after midnight on june 25th exactly half the year round from you know aka jesus who wasn't born 
on Christmas Day. That was just the day that was adopted for it. Because of the pagans celebrating Mithras. Anyway, uh, I did like Rosemary's Baby. I uh, thought there were some interesting ideas in it. Um, I gave it probably a 4 out of 5. I thought it was very well written and like a perfect length. Um, there were bits I did like, bits I didn't like, um, bits that I think would definitely be different if it was written today. Um, but it's just an important book as well, um, and I can see why it's sort of been well known and, and well praised by the horror community throughout the years. So I would recommend getting to it if you get the chance. So there we have it, that's what I made of Rosemary's Baby by Ira Levin. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.